Bill Holmes' documentary, A Master of His Craft. William Wendell Holmes, commonly referred to as Bill Holmes, was the author of the Paladin Home Workshop Weaponry series of books and videos. Born on September 26, 1929, in Benton County, Arkansas, many people call themselves gun makers, but few have actually made a gun. Instead, most buy parts from various manufacturers and assemble them. Bill Holmes made countless rifles, handguns, and shotguns from scratch. As a result, he became an acknowledged expert on most firearms during his time as a professional. Background Bill Holmes started with finishing guns and attempting to make stocks at the age of 12, around the 1940s. Many guns in his area were old and broken, which created a market for him to practice. At the age of 14, he'd been able to make over 100 wood stocks for various firearms from scratch. During Bill's high school years, he moved to California, where he attended a school with a well-equipped metal machine shop and wood shop. Local gunsmiths in the area took a keen liking to Bill and began to share their knowledge with him. During this time, World War II was raging on and materials were rationed, so he had to acquire metal from a T4 dry shaft in order to build one of his first firearms. This was an early example of his creativity. After high school in the 1950s, Bill served four years in the US Army, assisting the war effort in Korea in his first year and a half. After the war, he worked on gunsmithing for the officers in his unit. Post-military service in 1954, he moved to Georgia where he built several speciality weapons for government agencies. He even worked on a project that refurbished and modified firearms for Fidel Castro before Castro would go on to taking over Cuba. Then later helped refurbish weapons for groups that were meant to overthrow Castro, but with lack of US support, turned into the famous event called the Bay of Pigs. In 1964, Bill decided to move back to his home state of Arkansas, where he began working on many custom firearms with various contacts he had. Notable firearms he made included a 22 LR pistol from mostly nylon materials that could pass through metal detectors of the time. It used a ceramic firing pin and ammunition that was stored in a special belt buckle. This was decades ahead of its time, with the first plastic 3D printed gun coming to the market in 2013 by Cody Wilson. He made intermediate range sniper rifles chambered in 45 ACP and used 1911 magazines. They made use of sound suppressors and were effective over 200 yards. He built several longer range sniper rifles which had the ability to be quickly taken down and fit into a 26 inch discrete case. They were chambered in 308 and 300 Winchester with interchangeable parts. Light recalling trap shotguns that can still be found on the market today occasionally sold on the used market. Bill had a successful business selling and servicing trap guns. Unfortunately, his mother was diagnosed with a terminal cancer and his business took a massive setback due to his time being devoted toward caring for his mother. At the same time, one of his sons would go on to commit a robbery with a group of friends while high on drugs, which resulted in one of the friends killing the victim. All four were convicted and put on death row for the murder of the innocent man. The stress of both situations resulted in the business being neglected and orders unfulfilled. This would become a breaking point for Bill, which led him to close shop. Sometime after, his mother passed away and his son had been sent to prison. He began to have more time for firearms. He knew his trap gun business was toast. He looked at making new prototype guns and licensing them out. One was submitted to Shotgun News, which led to nine potential deals, but all fell through for different reasons. One large firearm manufacturer even tricked him into a fake meeting where he brought his prototype with him. While doing a tour of their facility, they took his firearm and began to take notes so they could reverse engineer it. He promptly left after finding their team unable to reassemble the gun. After repeated issues with trying to license his designs, he would go on to start writing a long series of books that would show people how to build many of his firearm designs, which become widely popular for home gunsmiths. He would also start selling these firearms on a small scale production. His first book was published January the 1st, 1977 by Paladin Press called Home Workshop Guns for Defense and Resistance Volume 1, The Submachine Gun. 
This book covers a manufacture and assembly of a pistol calibre tube submachine gun with the use of a home workshop, in a similar manner of P. A. Lutie's book, however Bill's design predated Mr. Lutie by a couple of decades. He will go on to write many more books and two instructional videos in a similar format over the course of the next two decades. On January 1st 1979, Home Workshop Guns for Defence and Resistance Volume 2, The Handgun. The homemade handgun was chambered in 22 LR, 32 ACP and 380. November 1994, Home Workshop Prototype Firearm, How to Design, Build and Sell Your Own Small Arms. This book covers much of his life and provides very useful information for home gunsmith and aspiring firearm designers. May the 1st 1995, Home Workshop Guns for Defence and Resistance. The 22 machine pistol, this firearm was homemade submachine gun chambered in 22 long rifle and had more refined design features and lighter materials, such as using sheet metal receiver instead of a milled receiver. March the 1st 1996, Home Workshop Guns for Defence and Resistance, 9mm Machine Pistol Volume 4. This book was an improvement over the first submachine gun, with design improvements. November the 1st 1997, Home Workshop Guns for Defence and Resistance, Volume 5, the AR-15 M16. This book covered a conversion for the AR-15 M16 to be converted to a pistol calibre, such as a 9mm or a 45 ACP. January 1st 1998, Entrapment, the BATF in action. This book covered his legal issues with the ATF and was a main source of information about his life still available to the public. September 1st 2002, the 50 caliber rifle construction manual with easy to follow full scale drawings. This book highlighted the ability for a home gunsmith to make such a large high power caliber like the 50 caliber cartridge. September 1st 2003, the Master Gunmaker's Guide to Building Bolt Action Rifles. This book covers all of the key elements to making a bolt action rifle found in hunting and target shooting. The two films he made released on VHS and covered many weapons from the books he made. Around the early 2000s, while in his 70s, Bill was suffering from Parkinson's disease and was partially blind, which started to slow down his book and video series. Legal Troubles During the 80s, Bill would sell open bolt pistols similar to what was found in his books, but in semi-automatic to comply with the US law at the time. This was done on a small scale production for over 6 years, roughly 100 plus guns a year of this type. Several of the guns he made had ended up in the hands of gangs, who had converted his firearms to illegally fully automatic firearms. The ATF would go on to declare that these firearms were easily to be converted to fully automatic. This made them illegal weapons overnight and hundreds of innocent owners become potential felons through no fault of their own. The ATF would go on to track down many of these weapons and confiscate them without compensation to the owners. The ATF would fine Bill for the guns he made that were originally legal that didn't require the $200 tax stamp. Now with the ATF change of determination, he was required to pay $200 tax for each firearm that he made that was determined to be a machine gun. Bill refused to pay for these fines and received harassment from the authorities for over a year on the matter, until they finally gave up. The ATF would follow Bill to gun shows across the country in order to trick him into selling or making illegal weapons for undercover agents. Bill refused these agents, however he had been collecting evidence of these entrapment attempts including audio recordings. He decided he would try to fight this in court in front of a judge, so that the harassment would end. The next time an agent attempted to get him to make or sell an illegal weapon, he complied with their request. In 1992, after years of harassment by the ATF, they finally raided his home. They confiscated Bill's tools, firearms and related parts for evidence for the case against Bill. Entrapment by law enforcement is illegal in the US depending on the situation and the original intent of the person being charged. In 1993, Bill was indicted by a federal grand jury of possessing and transferring illegal weapons. Bill was released on bail and would work with his lawyer on fighting the charges against him. He refused to plead guilty several times and wanted his day in court. Court records show that Bill declined federal agents over 36 times to build or sell illegal firearms to them. 
Bill collected a massive amount of evidence to prove his case, and with the help of a good lawyer called Jennifer Haran, he would go on to win his case. He was able to convince the jury that the ATF had entrapped Bill into making illegal weapons and he was not guilty of illegal firearm charges. Despite winning his case, the federal government had delayed returning thousands of dollars worth of guns, equipment and tools to him. Most of what was returned to him was damaged or mishandled when it was seized. Although he kept his freedom, the financial toll ate away at the Holmes family. Bill kept a fully equipped machine shop in an outbuilding next to his home in Fayetteville or Kansas. But in later years of his life, he was forced to sell off his lathers, drill press and other equipment to pay legal and medical bills. For a brief period, he turned his hand to knife making. Bill passed away on December the 4th, 2008, and now rests at the Fayetteville National Cemetery. Bill Holmes was preceded in death by two sons, Jeff and James Holmes. Survivors include a daughter, Leslie of Oklahoma, and two grandchildren. Bull Holmes' son was put to death in August 1994. There's no doubt in my mind nowhere to begin We were in for a penny and out for a pound Took on the world, now we're out for the count. You go your way, I'll go mine. We did everything without. Looking back with a glint in our eyes and a spring in our step. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed the content, please consider sharing these videos or donating on Patreon to keep these films coming out on a consistent basis. You can also support the channel by following Wild Arms Research and Development on Instagram and picking up a copy of the book Expedient Recoilless Launcher Panzerfoot on Amazon.